Beach FM, locals talking to locals. Beach FM, but the man who's uh, not lost, he's found, he's found his way here is our Peter Edwards with a Shoreline Film Review. Good morning, Peter. Good morning, Nigel. What film did you see this week? I went to see a film called The Goldfinch. Ah. Uh, and it's billed as uh, the story of a stolen life. Story of a stolen life. Here we are. You give me the brochure. Right. Well, it just arrived. Yeah, first first showing yesterday. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, What's it about? Right. I mean, the title well, doesn't give you much of an indication, does it? Well, it certainly doesn't. And uh, I mean, I have to say, I, I sort of did a peep on the on the internet and had a look at it, and everything I'd heard and read about the film suggested to me that I wouldn't like it. Yes. A, it was long. It's two and a half hours long, so right. it's a bit of a. You know, you, you start shifting in your seat a bit. Um, it was a bit slow and somewhat tedious. It was plagued by flashbacks, which I loathe and detest because I have difficulty sort of following the, the pattern of where, where, where we're coming from and oh, where we're going right. to. OK, yes. Um, but despite all of that, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, right. OK. Somewhat strange. And, and yes. perhaps, perhaps I say this is because I can review it on its own merits rather than comparing it with the novel on which it is based. Um, it's the novel of the same name was written by a lady called Donna Tartt and it won the Pulitzer Prize in 2014. Goodness. So I, mean, I enjoy my reading, but I tend to avoid books which are either Booker Prize or Pulitzer Prize winners because more often than not they're a bit too highbrow. And I can't, I can't get along with those. Uh, but maybe this is why I can re- recommend this film where others perhaps might not. OK. Now, the goldfinch is the name of a small 17th century painting of a small bird. And it was on display in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York on the day of a terrorist bombing. Now, 13-year-old Leo, Theo, sorry, Theo Decker... Now, he's viewing the painting with his mother when the bomb explodes and his mother is killed. And in the upheaval following that explosion, Theo is persuaded by a a dying man to take the painting. And it's thereafter presumed to have been lost um, and destroyed in the bombing itself. So when he takes it, of course, they assume that because it's no longer there that it's it's gone and apparently way back in the 1600s it was a subject of another explosion in a munitions factory and it survived that so it has a history if you like over the years of centuries in fact of uh, changing lives and this is really the the story, the story behind mm. behind the whole of this the painting's most probably worth a fortune now by well yeah indeed it is but he doesn't sell it he just keeps, keeps it. it tucked away yes and i'll come on to that in in a bit um, but, you know, it, as I say, the painting has been handed down over the centuries and somehow it keeps changing lives on its journey through the years. Um, now, the dying man, who he also gives Theo a ring, which he asks him to take back to his partner, a guy called Hobie. Now, Hobie's an antiques dealer, and he becomes part of Theo's world because he teaches him all the tricks of the antiques trade. Um, some of them are not quite as... <laughs> nice as you might might hope, um, but anyway, Theo, um, he, his father is no longer part of on the scene. He's gone walkabout, and and it, but and because he's effectively an orphan, he gets taken in by a rather upper class barber family, headed up by a matriarch played by N- Nicole Kidman. It's about the only named person that I know in the film itself. He's yeah, looking down through the list here. I don't yeah, really not many, recognize not many, any. No, no names. No. I would to say. So, so the point is, we've we've got a here we've got a grieving and a somewhat impressionable thirteen year old being pulled in. In, in somewhat different directions by Hobie with his dubious practices in the antiques trade and by the relative, relatively calming influence of the adoptive Barber family. And his world, Theo's world, is further disrupted by the reappearance of his father um, who removes him from this settled Barber family home and takes him to live with him in Las Vegas. And here, Theo meets uh, a fellow student, Boris, son of a Russian, at the school. And his life gets further complicated because Boris introduces him to the world of drugs and a habit which continues with him right into adulthood. Yes. Um, 
Eventually, Theo has very little alternative but to return to New York when his father attempts to coerce him into giving up his inheritance to finance a somewhat dubious money-making scheme. And we later learn that uh, um, Theo's father is killed in a road traffic accident, so he's back to being, if you like, an orphan again. But on his return to New York, and he effectively runs away from Las Vegas in order to work his way back to New York, he finds refuge with Hobie, the antiques dealer. And antiques dealing eventually becomes his career. And we follow Theo through his adulthood and a re-involvement with this barber family who originally took him in, adopted him, and it unfortunately turns out to be a somewhat disastrous engagement to the daughter of the family. Right, yes. Uh, now, throughout all of this, Theo believes that the painting of the goldfish has remained in his possession. He keeps it in, or, or has kept it, in a lockup with all his sort of personal possessions. Um, but a chance encounter with the grown-up Boris, his ex-student friend from Las Vegas, it reveals the truth, that Boris has actually taken it and used it as security for a drug deal, and effectively oh the, the oh. painting is now lost to the world. Yes, yeah. Now, Boris promises to get it back, and this leads to a, a, a violent confrontation in, in an Amsterdam multi-storey car park, and the painting eventually is restored to its proper place, and I'm not going to say any more than that about right, it. Right, OK. Now, the film is dominated clearly by one character, Theo, Theo Decker, okay. and it's played by two individuals, a, a, a lad by the name of Oakes Feglia, again, I've never heard of him, he's the 13-year-old, and Ansel Elgert as the adult version. Now, both actors, to my mind, give sterling performances, really very, very good. But as for the film itself, judging by some reactions to it, I suspect that those who have read the book may find the film version something of a letdown, trying as it does to try and put hundreds of pages of writing into a two-and-a-half-hour film. Uh, that said, if, if, like me, the book is just one of many thousands yes. on shelves uh, and, then, and they're unread, then you are quite likely to enjoy this film. Right. So which part does Nicole Kidman play in this? She plays the matriarch. She's the head, if you, or the mother, if you like, of the Barber family. Ah, oh, right, OK. Who become his adoptive family. Yes. So, anyway, I enjoyed the film, despite my misgivings. <laughs> well, there we are, Peter. You There's shouldn't the schedule. Go. It's on um, once, possibly twice, for the remainder of, uh, certainly up until next Wednesday. I think, for the most part, you'll find that the... The cinema is currently dominated by Downtown, Downtown Abbey. <laughs> yes, I would think so. <laughs> Everywhere you go, you'll find people waiting or just leaving Downton Abbey. Fair enough, too. Which I, I gather because my wife saw it and thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm. Well, the Goldfinch is on pretty regularly throughout the uh, cinemas over the next week anyhow, that's for sure. Well, thanks for that, Peter. You've made it a, a, an interesting uh, review and something that uh, yeah, might touch the fancy of a lot of people. I, I think. think it might. Yeah. It might. I, I, if you haven't read the book, and I think this is where a lot, where a lot of the... Because um, some of the critics really pla panned it because... They enjoyed the book, and the Pulitzer Prize book has been condensed. Um, and it never works. It never works properly unless you do it in a, in a series. Sure. So if you hadn't read the book, you most probably would enjoy the film even more, would. would you? I did. Yes. I did. Right. Peter Edwards. 106.3 BGFM.